Sirius XM, it's the highway. It's a Stormy Warren show. Stormy and MC and our pal deep in the heart of Oklahoma. Blake Shelton is with us. Now, I just got to say something here. Let's just get the gorilla out of the room, the elephant out of the room, whatever you want to call it. Let's get it out of the room because I'm going to rename this song and it'll put things into perspective. Forget about minimum wage. It's not about right. minimum wage. I think you should have just written the song as I'm rich AF and I got a hot fiance. <laughs> you know what? I'm writing this down. I'm writing this down. Can We're, you imagine the trouble you could have avoided if you had just done that? <laughs> you know what, Stormy? I don't even know what trouble is anymore. I feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's so much complaining on social media is just starting to turn into noise to me. Yeah. And then it's turn into a, a sound that you hear that you don't even realize you're hearing it like the air conditioner going or something. It's, it's so out of control out there that I don't even respond to it anymore because I'm so accustomed to, you know, anything I say or any move, any of us really make, somebody's going to have something to say about it. And I just don't think you can live your life by, you know, side to side, trying to, trying to appease everybody along the way, especially, you know, when you put out a song, a song that's a love song, if you can find something offensive <laughs> in the lyric of this song, man, I, we're just going to have to agree to, to disagree on that one. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I don't want to offend you, but you're no, I, I, I refuse to accept that. You're just trying to pick a fight. If it's a fantastic song it. and it is a love song. It's a fantastic song and it, it's based on truth, but it's like the people that expect you to sing songs that are only mirror your exact life kind of goes against the country music code. I don't think Johnny Cash shot a man in Reno. <laughs> I don't think so either. And, you know, and, and, and thank God Merle Haggard never had to, to find out that, he couldn't sing working man blues anymore uh, because that's, he's not doing that. Right. He's, he's, uh, he's too rich to, to, to experience the working man blues. I, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's a shame, but it's a shame that people are that unhappy, you know, because at the end of the day, that's, that's where it ends and begin. I mean, begins and ends because I, I refuse to really give them a platform as long as yeah. about love and the fact that if you have love at the end of the day that's that's all that really matters and and anybody that wants to somehow somehow challenge me on my background and and where i came from and and the fact <laughs> that i came from nothing uh please i'd love to have that that conversation if you are if you want to pick a fight that bad we can i can tell you what tough time feel like and and also the fact that those are the favorite memories of, of my life looking back you know those yeah. were when i really found out what things truly matter in life and and i wouldn't trade that for, for anything so uh but you know stormy they're not country music fans if they can if they complain about a lyric like this they don't know anything about country music if they can find something upsetting about this song because our our music is about common everyday people, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I bet you can't wait to play that live. Right. <laughs> you know, I was telling somebody earlier, I, I said, Matt, you know, not only do I, I love the message of the song, but selfishly, I'm just glad to have an up tempo in my concert because my, <laughs> my shows as you know, they tend to put people to sleep what? or they, or they leave suicidal after they hear the baby <laughs> or all these sad songs. It's like, Oh, thank God. Something that's up tempo is, is nice for a change. It really is. It's a blast of a song. It's and I can't wait to see it live. I was telling MC, um, one of the last times I saw you perform was uh, up in Minnesota at WeFest, Fest, and it's one of the greatest concerts I've ever seen you do or seen in in person. Period. Oh my God! Wow, thank you. It, 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 it just it, just because I I'd never thought you were that good. So it, it was just it was one of those just. Beautiful <laughs> you didn't mention that performances, and uh, but your ability to connect with the crowd, you have got to be missing that more than just about anything. You know, I am, and I'm in some ways, I, I, I hate that. Obviously, we all hate that this has happened, but uh, it's also, I think, been a good thing f for me to kind of to be forced to have to take a step back and realize how much, how lucky, again, a reminder of how lucky I am and, and have been 
over the years to do what I do. And, and also it's given me a chance, like you said, to, to really miss that, you know, because yeah. for a long time, I thought if this goes away for me and it's going to go away for me at some point, you know, how am I going to fit? How am I going to handle it? Am I going to, am I going to, you know, go into a depression or whatever? And, and, and I don't think that would happen, but that connection, that rush that you get on stage when you know that those people that are sitting out there looking at you, just like you do doing what you do and, and MC you're, you're, you're communicating with people who are on the same page or on the same wavelength as you are. And there's an, there's an energy yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and electricity that happens and uh, you can't explain it. It just, it just happens and it, and it feels so good and, and of course I, I missed that i didn't know how much i would miss it till now you know yeah we always take things for granted we try not to but it's yeah. a, just human nature that a repetition will force you into a space of getting used to something to the point where you you, you take it for granted and i think a lot of people are learning not to take things for granted after this, uh, yeah. this crazy year. speaking of uh we fest you're going back in august it's nice to have something on the calendar which is looks really I good know. well you know i saw they put the the uh they put tickets on sale for, for that. And I think one other show, uh, that, that uh, fair or festival that I'm a part of and, and, and I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm, I'm crossing your fingers. Yeah. Cautiously optimistic about it. Uh, and, and, and they must know, you know, they must have their finger on the pulse of, of what they feel like the, the reality is going to be then, or, or they wouldn't have put those things on sale. I guess the worst that can happen is it gets postponed again, like kick the every can it's gets but at least at least uh, they're uh, they're trying you know and, and that's all we can do right now just looking at your house right there and just knowing what your view looks like out there i'm very yeah. jealous look at that oh, i don't know if that on out or not oh <laughs> no it's perfect i love it i miss it it's beautiful there that's a, a yeah. pretty unbelievable and that's the spot where a very magical event happened and i was watching jimmy fallon the other night when your fiance told the story of how uh you proposed to her and I understand it wasn't quite the smooth process, even getting to Oklahoma to execute this proposal. It was a bit of a rocky road to get there. And it was, it, it, you know, not to be boring, but a more COVID, you know, it, travel issues. And we had had this trip planned to, to come to Oklahoma because we, we wanted to have an early Thanksgiving uh, this year because we had the opportunity to get everybody together like the actual thanksgiving was going to be well they're going here they're going there so we had a a window of time and so i thought wow i know i want to ask when to marry me that'll be the perfect time found the ring had this whole thing planned and as the the trip got closer and closer we kind of had a couple of moments there where we thought it was going to fall apart because of you know covid travel situations and stuff and Ended up, everything worked out. And, but then the, the the funny part of that is I, I want, we have a, a, a place here on, on the ranch. It, it's a it's a small little chapel that that uh, we had built here. And, and um, we go there to think or, or pray or just sometimes to even have a glass of wine or something. And, and, I, and I knew that I wanted to ask Gwen uh, there. And, and every time we come to Oklahoma, she always wants to go over there at least for an hour or so and, and just see it and hang out. And so I thought, well, I'm going to wait till it's her idea to go there. I'm not going to say, hey, let's go to the chapel because I've never done that. Right. <laughs> so I thought I'm going to wait. And so I put this ring in the side pocket of my truck door. I've read where people think I put it in the glove compartment, but I wasn't that smart. Right. I put <laughs> I put it in the side compartment of my truck door, which is full of, you know, sonic salt packets and 22 bullets and pocket <laughs> knife, change, all that crap. And I remember thinking, I'm so in and out of my truck. I thought, man, this, if this ring falls out of here, like I, I'm going to, it's, it's, and somebody finds it, they're going to have a hell of a year. Yes. Uh, so, so, I got lucky enough. And about three days after I put it in my side pocket, she said, Hey, let's all go up to the chapel, you know? And so that was the moment I knew uh, it, it was going to go down and, and I went and double checked to make sure I hadn't lost, lost the ring at that point. And so everything worked out. So 
It was beautiful. I love the story. And she was yeah. just she was just shocked that that's where the ring was kept for days. I know she's probably she probably has nightmares about it, just like I do. You know. Well, congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations from all of us. Two number ones for the two of you, uh, which is pretty uh, stellar. She's a bona fide country music superstar now, and she's kicking your ass on The Voice. What's uh, what's going on here? You know, I read a I read a story after uh, it was after Nobody But You became a, a number one hit at, at radio. Uh, I read a, a story that came out about her in Billboard or an industry type magazine that said that she's one of a handful of artists uh, in, in the history of music that's had a number one song in like, I, I want to say like five or six different genres of music, including, you know, uh, uh, rap, R&B, country, mm -hmm. pop, rock. Like there's a, there's a bunch of them. And, and you, you go, how does somebody accomplish that? You know, a lot of people try it, you know, and a lot of times they get the door slammed in their face you know because it's yeah. just it's not the the, the style that, that works for them you know and, and Gwen she grew up on so many different kinds of music uh and, and that she's able to to make it kind of work you know whatever she's singing she has a way of making it work for for herself so it's it's neat to see to to see that and, and to know that she's accomplished this weird thing that uh, it's not very many people have done, you know? So, uh, everything full steam ahead for a brand new season. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we're starting season 20 stormy, if you can believe that. Wow. And, uh, it's this season's going to be, um, Kelly, John legend and, and Nick Jonas is back. Uh, I see MC gets a super smile on her face when I say that. So, what girls don't uh, think he's cute. What are you talking about? <laughs> I love that kid. He's, he's, he's great. I think he learned an important lesson last, last time he was on, which is, it was his first season, which, you know, getting, being nice, get it, gets you absolutely nowhere on that show. And so the, we've already filmed the blind auditions for this season. And, and he comes out, he comes out swinging this year. He's the nice Nick is gone. He, he realizes now you gotta, you gotta be rude and spiteful. You got to tell lies. You got to do whatever you got to do to get artists to pick you as their coach. Bring out puppies. I mean, they bring out puppies. He learned from the best. I tell you. <laughs> well, that's awesome. We look forward to it. And uh, that Carter kid, I'm telling you, he is a superstar. I can't wait to see what happens with him. You know, Gwen's been really great with him after the fact. Also, they stay in touch and, oh, and, and email and she's actually, uh, connected him with her management. And this kid's going to have a, a legit, shot at this thing beyond just winning the show you know i think we're going to see some big opportunities for him which is a nice change uh and, and so i i think he I, I agree with you i think he's he's going to be a big star it's so cool well the song is called minimum wage or the retitle is i'm rich af and i've got a hot fiance <laughs> so that's <You're> so bad <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's honesty. Honesty. <laughs> That's it. Real life. That's what country music's all about. <laughs> Blake Shelton, have fun in Oklahoma. Go Pokes. And uh, please stay in touch with us. And I toast a little Smithfield vodka in your honor. I love you guys. Stay safe. You got it. See you, pal. Yeah. See ya.